My aim is to discover if some earthworms, a lot of earthworms, or no earthworms will help the growth rate of plants. And my hypothesis is that the presence of a lot of earthworms in the soil will aid plant growth. So here I've got all the equipment that I need to do my experiment. So here I have the potting mix and shovel and then water as my plants and permanent marker and masking tape to put some labels on the pots and then I have the three different pots to do my planting in. Now all I've got to do is find some worms. So now that I've got the worms and all my equipment together, I'm going to start by labelling the pots. So the first pot I've labelled is going to be the control. That means there's not going to be any worms or anything in it, it's just going to be plain soil. My second pot is going to be the some worms pot, pot which means that um, it's going to have five worms in the soil. And my third pot is going to be the a lot of worms pot. So there's going to be 15 worms in the soil of this pot, which means the soil is going to be pretty much chock-a-block full of worms. So my next step is to start putting the potting mix into the pots. I've chosen a potting mix that doesn't have any added fertilizer or wetting agents, so I'll know that it's definitely just the worms that are making any difference to the plants. And for this step, I'm going to have to wear a safety mask just to make sure that I don't breathe in any harmful bacteria. Now I'm going to start putting the plants into the pots. Um, the type of plant I'm using is called foxglove. There's going to be three plants per pot and they're going to be evenly spaced throughout the pot. So now it's time to start putting my worms in. Um, in the control pot, I'm not going to be putting any worms in the soil of that pot just because the purpose of the control pot is to compare the growth of these plants to the growth of the plants with um, worms in the soil. In this pot, I'm going to be putting five worms. And in this pot, I'm going to be putting 15 worms. So now I'm going to start watering my pots. I'll put 500 mils of water in each pot, just so it eliminates the variable of how much water each plant is getting. Now I'm going to spread some slug and snail killer around the plants just so I can stop them from getting damaged by any hungry snails. And now I just gotta let them grow. So from my experiment I received some unexpected results. My hypothesis was the presence of worms in the soil will aid plant growth. This meant that I expected the pot with 15 worms to grow the best, the pot with 5 worms to grow the second best, and the control pot, the pot with no worms, to grow not that well in comparison. But in my experiment, the plants in the control pot are looking bigger and healthier than the, pla the plants in the pot with 5 worms. Whereas the plants with 15 worms are looking really, really healthy. 
This leads me to believe that there is something different about the pot with five worms in it. But I went to great lengths to make sure that the only difference between the pots was the amount of worms. So maybe the pot with five worms had some malfunctioning plants, but I made sure that the plants wouldn't be a factor by using three plants per pot to reduce the risk of a faulty plant. So this would mean that an unknown factor has influenced the growth of the plants in the five worm pot. To try and work out what this factor is, I'm going to test the pH and moisture content of the soil as well as checking the amount of worms in each pot. So I'm going to start off by testing the moisture content of the soil in each pot and I'm going to do this by using a moisture meter. So to start off with the 15 worm pot and the moisture content is 2 out of 10 which is fairly dry. And then the five worm pot and the moisture content is three out of ten which is also fairly dry and the control pot moisture content is four out of ten so in comparison all three pots are fairly dry so I'd say that moisture wasn't a factor in making these plants grow not that well so now I'm going to test the pH of the soil. Here I've got a sample of soil from the control pot. I'm going to put 5 mils of distilled water in. And then 10 drops of the pH test solution. Now I'll put the cap on and give it a good shake. And then I just have to leave that for two minutes so the colour can develop. So it took quite a while for the control pot to show some results. So I went ahead and tested out the other pots as well. Here are the results. Um, as you can see, all three of them have a pH of 6, which means that the pH didn't have a factor in making the plants grow differently. So now I'm going to dig through each pot to count the number of worms and compare the number of worms in each to the number that I started with. So I'm going to start with the control pot, which hopefully should have no worms, and I've got my gloves on to protect my hands. I'm going to start by taking out the plants and replanting them elsewhere. So now I'm going to empty all the dirt from this pot into the tub so I can go through it and check to see if there's any worms. No worms. So now I'm going to go through the five worm pot. I'm expecting that there might be more than five worms in here as worms reproduce every week. So I'll start off by taking the plants out again. found the first worm. So after all of that, I only found one worm and this pot was supposed to have five worms in it. So either the other four have died or they've escaped through the holes out the bottom. And that would probably explain why the plants aren't growing as well as I would have thought they were, but it doesn't explain why they're growing worse than the pot with no worms. So now I'm going to dig up the 15 worm pot. First worm. There's another worm. Worm number three. Worm number four. So in the 15 worm pot I found four worms. So I'm guessing over the two pots, the five worm pot and the 15 worm pot, over the course of the experiment all the worms have probably exited by the holes in the bottom but there's still a difference between the amount of worms in this pot and the amount of worms in the five worm pot and the ratio is still fairly the same with 15 worms to five worms and now four worms to one worm during my experiment I came across some unexpected results 
these re results being the poor growth of the plants in the pot with five worms in comparison to the plants in the control pot and the 15 worm pot. I then tested three variables which could have altered the growth of the plants, these variables being moisture content, soil pH and the amount of worms in each pot. The moisture content and pH were the same across the three pots, so this wouldn't have had any effect on the strange growth rate of the five worm pot. There were significantly less worms in the pots than what I started with, but the difference of the worms between the pots had relatively the same ratio. Therefore, I believe it would be safe to say that the worms were also not a contributing factor to my strange results. I have used all of the resources which I have available to attempt to comprehend the results, but unfortunately I have found no def definitive explanation for them. However, from the results that I was able to obtain over my six weeks of testing, I can see from the 15 worm pot that the presence of a lot of worms in the soil does aid plant growth, as the plants in the 15 worm pot were much bigger and healthier than the plants in the control pot. So I think it is sa safe to say that this myth is confirmed. I was about to say busted. <laughs> I need to pick up the worm before I pick up the dirt. So I'll pick up the dirt afterwards. I'll be like, there's a worm. <laughs> <laughs> and now what am I doing? So now I'm going to do, what am I, what am I doing? pH. Test the pH.